Hello, my name is Isil Ann Lim, and I am a AAAS fellow at the NIH, assigned to the National Institute of Mental Health, and on detail to the NIH Office of Extramural Research. I'll be staying at OER for my second year, working on policies to enhance reproducibility in scientific research through rigor and transparency. Much of scientific progress is based on previous work. However, a large percentage of experiments cannot be replicated due to a range of factors, from faulty data to journal articles only vaguely describing their methods. The economic impact of irreproducible research has been estimated to be as much as $28 billion. For example, cell lines are frequently misidentified or contaminated. If a researcher is testing a drug to treat a brain tumor, but is instead mistakenly using an ovarian cancer cell line, the results might be misleading. So key resources, such as cell lines or antibodies, need to be authenticated and correctly identified. Some studies only include one sex. However, testing a drug in only male mice could show that it was effective for men, but not necessarily for women. Therefore, both sexes must be considered in preclinical studies. The NIH Office of Research on Women's Health showcases some of these differences in terms of sex, which is genetic, versus gender, which is cultural. New NIH policies clarify four key areas. Scientific premise is the prior research forming the basis for proposed questions. Rigorous experimental design should be robust and unbiased. Applications must examine differences in biological variables, such as sex, and authenticate key biological or chemical resources, such as cell lines. Our office publishes the NIH Guide for Grants and Contracts for NIH policies, guidelines, and funding opportunities. After discussions with internal and external stakeholders, we developed guide notices and articles for Dr. Rocky's very well-read blog on enhancing reproducibility through rigor and transparency, as well as considering sex as a biological variable. I created a web page for OER, which has guidance to clarify NIH's expectations, links to reports on stakeholder input, and a list of useful references. We also have an email address, reproducibility at nih.gov, to continue gathering feedback from the community. Our team is also developing answers to frequently asked questions. We organize three focus groups with program officials and scientific review officers from across the NIH's institutes and centers. Each group focused on either basic, preclinical, or clinical research. These helped us to identify staff training needs and questions. NIH Director Francis Collins emphasized that NIH's efforts alone won't be enough. Luckily, over 130 journals now require reporting important experimental parameters, such as standards used, whether data were excluded, etc. NIH is tackling the start of the research process through grant applications, and journals are covering the end with publications. I'd like to thank the NIH Rigor and Reproducibility team for welcoming me onto their project, especially our leader, Dr. Judy Hewitt, over here. And thanks to fellow AAAS fellow Kirsten for collaboration at ORWH. And many thanks to my AAAS placement office at NIMH and my supervisor, Meredith Fox, for supervising my um, detail at OER. Thank you. <laughs>